Do you know that, do you know, my brothers and sisters, that we've got to keep our family close together? And our children are beautiful and precious, and God is looking for us not to hurt them, but to help them. And the way to help them is to make them recognize through you and through them that God is a holy God. And if the Lord is in his holy temple, then what should all the earth do? We should keep silence before him. Amen? Amen? I believe it's just that important. I believe that. And I believe our children. I believe that the reason why the devil gets our children to talk the most is because our children are so special. You see, when, when a child gets this message, the world's in trouble. Why, that's why the devil is spending so much time and attention on our young people. Why, he doesn't, if he makes an iPad for the adult, he's going to make an iPad for the child. iPad mini, yes. And he'll give the child. The child doesn't know how to read, but he give him an iPad. You say, well, I can't give them a Bible because they don't know how to read. The devil doesn't say that. Why, the devil knows they don't know how to read, he still gives them a video game. Video game, am I right? He'll give them a television show. That child does not know how to read. That child doesn't know how to even study. But that child, the devil will focus and make sure that he has something that will captivate his mind. And today we have a generation of young people that are more captivated with the devil than they are with Jesus. And the reason why this is so is because the devil sees the value of our young people. And if we understood the value of them, we would spend more time focusing on them to give them a message so they can understand that they have been brought into existence for such a time as this. But there's no way that a child can be taught what he needs to understand unless the adult teaches him. The Bible doesn't say, child, train up yourself. It says, train up a what? Child. That means that there must be some adults, some parents that believe this message, that are seeking to get their children ready whole families. I want to be one of those. What do you say? Now, this expression for such a time as this, does that come from the Bible? Where in the Bible does that come from? The book of Esther, is that right? There's something that happened in the time of Esther that is happening right now. Now, did the people of God in the time of Esther come into a crisis, yes or no? Was there a time of persecution that was getting ready to take place in the book of Esther? What brought about the persecution of God's people in the book of Esther. It was a law. Was a law getting ready to be passed? So the government passes a law. And the law that the government passes is the law that brings the religion of God's people or the people of God into a time of persecution. Is that right or wrong? So there's something about the book of Esther that has to do with you and I as the Sunday law is getting ready to pass. When our children are talking in church and careless in church, it's not their fault. It's because they've seen us talk in church. It's because they don't understand. We have not set them down and taught them that they have been brought into existence for such a time as this. You see, very soon, every child is going to wish he knew Jesus. Very soon, every adult, every family is going to do everything in their power to have a relationship with God. But my brothers and sisters, then when that law is passed, too late. Do you know that when that law was passed in the time of Esther, that no child was spared from that persecution? Do you understand that? It says that they would not have pity on children or adults. And when the Sunday laws pass and the time of persecution starts, the devil's not going to pity our children. And at that time, you're going to say, I wish that I had instilled religious faith in my family, but then it's going to be too late. But I'm so thankful that tonight it is not too late. What do you say? I believe that God brought us here for such a time as this. Now, question. We'll see it in the Bible before long. I I would even encourage in your own time, read Esther chapter 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Just read the, the few, first few books or chapters of Esther, and I want to ask you a question. Did the whole world at first know that Esther was a Jew? Did they all know that at first? So her identity at first was covered. Am I right? Her identity was hidden at first. Did she embrace her identity openly at first? Yes or no? No. no. But before the crisis, before the persecution, before the law, the only hope of God's people was that Esther, number one, had to recognize her identity. Am I right? She had to embrace her identity. Am I right? And then she had to manifest, reveal, disclose her identity before the world in order to save her people. And you're going to find out the day that our Seventh Adventist Church will never be saved from the persecution that's about to take place until we first identify who we are at Seventh Adventist. Until we recognize our distinctive message, our distinctive mission, our distinctive work, and to recognize we're not like every other denomination. We've got to understand that God made a special people, and when we understood that, we will be happy to be seven Adventists. We will be proud to be a part of the people of God, and we will recognize that God has placed us here for such a time as what? 
And I'm going to tell you something. Our only hope is in recognizing who we are as seven Adventists in Christ Jesus. And then we're going to find out that there are many that are outside our denomination that love God, but they don't understand what's about to happen. And God is going to try to reach the other sheep because the majority of true Christians are not in the seven, uh, not in the seven Adventist church. They're in other churches today. But God needs to do something here to reach the entire world. What do you say? Amen.